So thanks for coming out to my talk, uh, paleo, keto, <laughs> mitochondrial health, and autoimmune diets. This is my personal journey. And I wanted to give you guys context. I'll give you the science, but I wanted to give you the context of my story and my why. So who am I? Basically, this slide says I'm a super badass. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's surreal, all this stuff. Like I've been on Fox News. I was uh, a biochemist, like he said. I've patented a bunch of ingredients, like t and dynamine and some of the ketones. I've got more ingredients coming out. Registered dietitian, certified sports nutritionist. I'm a fellow in the ISSN. I was in a documentary last year called The Skinny on Fat that's getting re-released. And a supplement documentary that's coming out this year. Been on TV a bunch of times. Like he said, I've been all over the world. 10 years uh, chief clinical dietitian in acute and long-term care. So that all sounds amazing, obviously. And it gets better that I've been with uh, Matt Damon on the red carpet, Kerry Walsh, the Olympic medalist, Ty Lopez, the media mogul, Vishen Lakiani, Code of the Extraordinary Mind, Mind Valley, Lewis House, Jay Shetty, that crush it on social media. So this all seems amazing. But everything is not as it seems. We know that. And Instagram is filtered and my life was highly filtered. I was putting out all this, I'm a badass stuff, and I'm perfect, and I'm super healthy, and I'm surrounded by cool people, but meanwhile, I've been through a life of a lot of pain, physically and mentally. I grew up with severe depression, 80 to 100 pounds overweight, and again, a very involved health journey. So this is me uh, as a young future Texan. <laughs> I like the cowboy hat. Uh, what's wrong with me? What led me to discover keto for myself? And then I get into the science with what other tools I've added and what biohacking has helped and then how I'm helping others. And this all started, it was this cathartic journey where I decided to move away from just only doing science and only talking about all the cool stuff like the pathways and all that stuff and really getting into my story and rediscovering my why, why I'm here. When I talked to Kristen Noel, the editor of Best Self magazine, I was in New York City and telling her my story about depression, obesity, suicidal thoughts and what got me here and why I'm doing biochemistry and keto and became an RD, and I wanted to get past this shame and embarrassment that I've held almost my whole life. And you can see my medical history. This isn't just about weight loss. I mean, I have depression, obesity, and then I swung the other way with anorexia, where I was checking the scale constantly. I was scared to eat. I went from 280, 300 pounds to 160 pounds. And then I got Epstein-Barr virus and chronic fatigue syndrome, Hashimoto's, and then a tumor. So you can see that basically I'm as broken health-wise as possible. And that's scary to put out there on social media to say, I'm supposed to be like this brilliant dietitian. I'm supposed to know all the stuff with supplements and everything, but I'm broken. But that's exactly what I needed to do. And we all have darkness. We all have ways that we're broken, but broken is our beautiful, and it's really our superpower. It's how we connect with people. It's what makes us unique. It's what makes us special. And this is what really gave me my why. I wouldn't be standing here. Now I feel blessed that I have these things, that I have this brokenness. If I wasn't sick, if I didn't have these issues, I wouldn't have become a dietitian. I wouldn't be standing here. I wouldn't have become a formulator, I wouldn't have done all these things. So I was laughed at, I was bullied all through school. I was called fat ass because I had not only overweight, but I had a gynoid fat distribution with basically big legs and big butt and kids would laugh at me and I wasn't you know, getting into the cool kids, uh, you know, the prom, the, you know, the sports programs. I was just getting laughed at and I was crying all the time but fortunately I did well in school. 
But I was self-medicating with junk food, soda, candy, chips, video games. And this is me overweight, but I don't even have the pictures, like Dave Asprey had the pictures of him fat and, and thin. I don't even have the pictures of me fat because I've gotten rid of all of them. That's how depressed and hurt I was. I didn't even want anyone to see those pictures. And it's hard for me to even dig this part of my life back up because I've suppressed so much of it. And like I said, despite the bullying, I got really good grades. I was a National Merit Scholar. I had the highest SATs in my county. I was able to go to any school I wanted. And I chose to go to Babson for business. It was the number one business specialty school. And you know, that's what people told me to do, to be, uh, you know, go into business, make real money. It's the real world. I didn't know about pursuing your passion, pursuing your dream. I just was doing what people told me, what's logical. But while I was at Babson, I started working out. This is me getting in some decent shape after working out. And I started taking supplements, reading about sports nutrition. There was a book called uh, Optimum Sports Nutrition by Dr. Michael Colgan. And I was reading the Muscle Media 2000, Ironman, Muscular Development, you know, working out with the weights and just really getting passionate about this stuff. It was so exciting. Creatine had just come out. So this is a really interesting field, and I would spend hours in like GNC and vitamin shop, like some people do, like in a bookstore. I was just reading labels, just dreaming about what the next supplement could be, and I was kind of my in my early days of becoming a formulator. And I went to the doctor on a routine physical um, between my sophomore and junior year, and. I was telling him about my passion, and I expected him, as you know, most doctors, especially back then, uh, you know, expecting him to say, supplements, sports, nutrition, that's stupid. But instead, this doctor actually looked at me with excitement back and drew out a lifeline for me from 20 to 80 and said, why not be happy between here and here? And maybe if it was Dave Asprey's lifeline, it would be 20 to 180. Uh, but that was a game changer for me. He gave me permission to pursue my passion. And that's exciting that you can actually do what you love. So I would encourage you guys, if, you're, if you feel stuck right now, to go pursue what you love. That's the whole reason I'm standing here. It's the whole reason that I've become someone that stands out in my field, it's because I love what I do. And it makes all the difference. My 10 hours of passionate work can outdo someone's 80 hours of grinding. That term grinding kind of blows me away because you know it always gets thrown around. But you think about grinding, it's like heat, pieces breaking off, breaking down. People are like, heads down, just get it done. Grind, right? Does that make sense? Is that a good long-term idea? You should be in a flow state. You should be happy with what you love. If you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. So now I wanted to become a nutritional biochemist and go to Chapel Hill, the world's greatest formulator, sports nutritionist and work with pro athletes, inventor of new ingredients, and clini clinical registered dietitian. This is a crazy list. But because I was passionate and I was doing my dream, I eventually achieved all these things. It's, it's crazy that I manifested all of it. And you can manifest whatever you believe in if you're chasing your passion. And just like I want to impress upon you the power of words, that this one doctor really gave me permission to pursue my dream, that Another man nearly took it away. I had to go to UNC Greensboro, uh, which was in-state. If I wanted to go to Chapel Hill, I needed about two years of prereqs because I was a business student. And he told me it's about 26 credit hours a semester. You're a business student, and you'll fail, and you'll fail miserably. Oh, and you're not even in that good a shape. And this was a guidance counselor that is supposed to help people pursue their dreams. 
And instead, I don't know how many dreams he took away, but I almost killed myself that night. I had pills and alcohol in front of me and I was contemplating taking my own life because that dream that I talked about, my passion that I was now solely focused on, was ripped from me and told that it was stupid and impossible. So again, when people tell you things are stupid and impossible, fuck those people, right? Because I'm here despite what he said. And actually, him telling me that strengthened my resolve and now he's a part of my story. I thought about that guy every single day and probably in an unhealthy way. <laughs> I, like that guy's uh, get echoed in my head and I, was, I ended up getting straight A's, doing all of those classes, the biochemistries, anatomies, like what he said was impossible. And I got into Chapel Hill and started pursuing my master's in nutritional biochemistry. But adversity happened again. I don't know if you guys know like the obstacles the way, but this is like stoicism in mindset is kind of like hormesis in science. And adversity is frustrating, but it's the key to growth. And I ended up getting into an autoimmune fight with Epstein-Barr virus, Hashimoto's, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia. I was in extreme pain. I was in bed for three months, inflamed, and again, considered suicide. Because, again, I thought my dream was taken from me. I couldn't be a dietitian. I couldn't be successful in the world if I'm stuck in bed all day in pain, inflamed. So again, I thought my dream was gone. But luckily, I stumbled into these two books that were ahead of their time on the ketogenic diet. One was by Lyle McDonald for the, the practitioner. And the other book was this crazy bodybuilding book by Dan Duquesne that talked about how to get ripped by using this high fat diet. And at the time that was insane. Like, you know, everyone's doing like grilled chicken and tilapia and broccoli and all those things. So doing a keto diet is crazy. And I, between these two books, I'm like, this is like fascinating. There's something here. And I started to dig in and do it for myself. What did I have to lose? I was in bed. And I started discovering that I felt a lot better. And then I started to get even energetic. And this is me, I, I got a little leaner. Like I said, I only have the pictures where I look decent. Um, but yeah, I started to get leaner and feel better. And so 20 years ago, I was a little bit ahead of the curve, uh, keto became a solution for me. But back then, I didn't have the support. I didn't have the communities, the restaurants, the recipes, the keto treats, the health optimization summit. Like, I mean, the fact that we have keto and biohacking conventions and like we all hang out and like, it's so cool, right? Like back then, it was like, it was hard to even find a message board. You know, like I found these like beat up books, like that was like what I had. So up until about eight years ago, I would waver. You know, I'd go out with my friends or go on a vacation and then I might struggle to get back on track. So what changed eight years ago? A brain tumor. And what made me focus is I couldn't focus. I had headaches. Uh, and they called it a benign brain tumor, but you can see all these things, right? These, this list, low testosterone, it was like in the 70s, my estradiol, which is estrogen, is through the roof, prolactin through the roof, it's a prolactinoma, it secretes prolactin. Depression, sexual dysfunction, again, to be honest, I felt kind of suicidal for a couple days. And so I've battled depression as I've battled all these things that seem like God or the world or whatever is stacked against me. But ultimately, all these things have brought me here. And I'm so thankful that all of these things have happened to me because it connects me to all of you. So I started focusing on the new trends about eight, 10 years ago with ketogenic diet, paleo whole food, intermittent fasting, allergen testing, biohacking, supplements for immunity. 
but this is about a lifestyle. This isn't like eight to 12 week crash diet, like keto, like the keto diet, like you see on a magazine. This is me trying to maintain a brain tumor, uh, uh, autoimmunity, how do I stay healthy for the rest of my life? So if I'm going to make this a lifestyle, it's about cyclical keto. I have two meals a week where I have whatever, like Saturday, for example, and I go out with my friends to uh, a restaurant and a movie. I just have whatever I want. And I do targeted keto. So if I, I play sand volleyball competitively in Dallas, uh, which is very hot, and I'll play for like eight hours. And if I play for eight hours, I have whatever I want. I've earned those carbs. I can have Gatorade and gummy bears or whatever. And by the end of it, I'm actually back in ketosis again because I'm well adapted. And I don't track much anymore because uh, more than the numbers for me, it just matters how I feel. And I used to do like uh, the blood glucometer and the strips and all that kind of stuff. And it's cool to do every now and then to know, especially if you have some new food or new treat to like see how it affects you. Uh, but if I have something unplanned, like I was just in Sardinia, Italy, and they have very good pasta and pizzas, <laughs> and I wasn't going to not experience those things while on an incredible vacation to a blue zone, I had it, and then I moved on and fasted, and I even took some supplements that I can tell you like help with some of that stuff, like berberine. And again, it's not eight to 12 weeks, this is my life. So what supplements do I use for autoimmunity? And if you guys, any of you have issues, um, you know, please take a picture of this and I can send you this uh, presentation as well. And if you wanna tell me some of the things you're using um, that I'm not, please tell me, because I need help. I mean, I'm known as the world's greatest formulator, I'm a biochemist, all these things, but you can still tell me what works. That's what I love about this group, it's the N of one, right? So tell me. But exogenous ketones, C8 MCTs, uh, with the exogenous ketones, the active isomer is a lot better. It's about three times better. So the D or R form of the salts. The C8 MCTs is caprylic acid. It's better than standard MCTs, both of these for raising ketones. AHCC from mushrooms, it's a potent anti-cancer compound and immune system stimulant. Monolaurin from uh, coconut oil is a potent antiviral. And that's why a lot of people get a host of benefits from coconut oil above and beyond MCTs. Uh, adaptogens, definitely everyone should be on these. I love them. They're normalizing to your body. Helps not only with the immune system, but sleep and hormones and everything. Lysine is uh, an immune system stimulant, um, a ketogenic amino acid along with L-leucine. Liposomal vitamin C and glutathione, their bioavailability enhanced antioxidants. Glutathione is a master antioxidant, you've probably heard of it. Obviously getting your gut in order, and then cat's claw. So my two most important supplements of that list, if you don't wanna take you know, a handful of supplements like I do, I actually probably take over 100 pills a day, so that's like probably crazy for you guys. But AHCC, like I said, it's expensive, but this supplement works. And you can look up the research with cancer and some other conditions, and it's powerful. Uh, L-lysine is cheap. So this one I love, and I take that every day, and then I ramp up the dose sometimes if I don't get the sleep I need, if I'm overstressed, if I have to speak on stage, if I'm traveling to the UK, you know, whatever then I might take more if I feel like I'm crashing. And lysine is really powerful. It's like the anti-arginine. Uh, you guys might know that like with uh, herpes, like even like um, cold sores, like arginine's a trigger and lysine's the anti-trigger. So this is when I was working out five to six days a week just a year ago. And to tell you like, again, to be transparent, it's hard now that I've ramped up my schedule and I'm traveling like 70% of the year, it's hard to like be perfect with your diet and exercise when you're in planes and in hotels and whatever. So I can look like this <laughs> and I'm proud of that, but these are my best practices. Um, so ketogenic diet, working with an immunologist, paleo whole food, 
time-restricted feeding, daily exercise, just kind of movement. Movement is key. Did you know like just 10 minutes of walking after a meal can dramatically affect your blood sugar and your health? Just 10 minutes. I mean, even like your parents or you know, someone who's not really that active could do that and they could get off literally the medication. Just 10 minute walk after a meal. Meditation, gratitude, supplement sleep, uh, biostrap or aura ring, something to track. And then circadian rhythm is so critical. So paleo diet, uh, primal whole food diet, removes a lot of the allergens, helps with zonulin and leaky gut, which is a big part of autoimmunity. And then you can go one step further with autoimmune protocol like Chris Kresser and some other people have talked about where you uh, introduce one food at a time. This is something to look into. And then you can do uh, immunoglobulin testing with IgA, IgG. And Allie Miller is a friend of mine, has amazing recipes and cookbooks in this area. And Rob Wolf is a rock star in this area and a good friend. Love him. Check out his stuff. So fasting to better health. Time-restricted feeding, again, some people call it intermittent fasting. I do a 16 and 8, which means 16 hours not eating, 8 hours eating. I believe in following Dr. Sachin Panda's work. Again, going back to circadian rhythm, we do this during the daylight window. So 10 to 6 is something that works for me. But it's important, like, we shouldn't be eating late at night. I mean, that's, it's kind of like the blue light from your devices, right? Like, eating late at night doesn't make sense. So just like you want to avoid blue light at night, I would say it's good to avoid eating late at night. And then fasting raises ketones and butyrate. Butyrate's C4, short-chain fatty acid, uh, known for gut health, right? But butyrate actually has an interesting relationship with beta-hydroxybutyrate, the key ketone. They're actually interconvertible. Lowers insulin, glycation, inflammation, improved mitochondrial function. So circadian rhythm, so important. Like I said, the sun and moon cycle is what we follow on our body, and it's known as the sleep-wake cycle as well. And you know here, because of the, you know, the, the blue light blocking glasses and all these different things, the, the aura rings and bio straps, how important this rhythm is. It affects everything. And they've shown with sleep displacement syndrome with uh, night shift workers that they live 20% less long. Is that not crazy? 20% less life? So obviously circadian rhythm's important and they've shown that six and a half hours of sleep or less and you have three times the risk for diabetes and coronary heart disease. So it's important to get your sleep. It's important to sleep at the right time. Also, just to throw this out as a complete aside, uh, new research showed that happiness affects you in terms of your longevity 11 to 15%. You want the number one biohack? Just choose to be happy. Like I can tell you all the supplements and all the things, the straps, and choose to be happy. That's 12 extra years on your life. Is there a, bio, is there a biohack that beats that? I don't, I don't think so. So just be happy, choose happiness, chase your passion, right? So why does keto work with autoimmunity? There's not a lot of research here. But I think it's because of mitochondrial health slash mitochondrial dysfunction. And ultimately, that's about cellular energy. And we've all heard of like autophagy, the cellular cleanup, the detox, right? That's one of the reasons you do fasting. You also get it from exercise. But mitophagy is kind of a hot one now, too. And that's cleaning out the mitochondria. So going back to high school biology, I'm sure you guys know the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. The body's energy currency is ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And that is the cellular energy. And it's like an organelle in the cell, much like the heart is to your body. That's why we're all talking about mitochondria. It's so hot. And with mitochondrial dysfunction, this is a massive list. And I'm telling you right now that mitochondrial dysfunction 
and mitochondrial health will be the future of medicine. The next keto is mito. I guarantee it. Insufficient cellular energy is a new term that you're going to start hearing. It means that you're supposed to have this much energy to do your body processes, and you're making this much. And there's an insufficiency there, and it's called ice. But the same idea is true in neurological conditions with Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, et cetera, and they call it brain energy gap. It's the same idea. You need this much energy for your brain, and you're making this much. And there's a shortfall. And when we give those people ketones or you know, we do some of these things with, with cannabinoids or whatever, and we can bridge that gap, we see the condition improve dramatically. But you see with mitochondrial dysfunction, glycation, inflammation, oxidation. So we're all talking about how inflammation is bad, we're talking about blood sugar and diabetes, and we're not seeing the big picture that it's all tied back to mitochondrial dysfunction. And I could change the shape of medicine right now with three simple labs that probably cost about 100 bucks. And none of us have practitioners that are doing this. And it's just looking at mitochondrial dysfunction, which is tied to autoimmunity, biological aging, and all disease states. And if we were looking at hemoglobin A1C for blood sugar, if we were looking at CRP for inflammation, and we were looking at oxidized LDL for oxidation, I could give you a snapshot and tell you you've aged this much today. You're this much greater risk for getting diseases. We could reshape medicine for 100 bucks, but we're not doing that. You probably know the answer why. So is keto great with fat loss? We know it is. We know people that have lost, you know, 100 kilos or 100 pounds. And it's so much more. Like I just said, it remedies that whole list. We get better mitochondrial function and biogenesis, which means not only do the mitochondria work better, but we get more of them. You also get this from really intense exercise, too. So reduced glycation and insulin. CRP and the inflammasome, oxidation, uh, a better NAD to NADH ratio, which uh, you're seeing with, uh, right, the niagen, that's the idea there. Uh, it's anti-aging in the citric acid cycle, some, some of you might call it the Krebs cycle. It's an alternate fuel substrate, the ketones are, instead of glucose. We should be dual fuel, metabolically flexible but most of us only can use glucose for fuel. We're resistant to ketones. And again, it helps with that insufficient cellular energy or brain energy gap, telomere shortening, which is tied to aging, and then the CERT family of genes. So basically, you're able to produce more energy via your mitochondria working better and having more of them. That's how keto works, paleo, all these things, fasting. And surprise, surprise, if we look at the things that improve mitochondrial health, it's the things that improve your health. So it's not like a big mystery here. These are, it's a great list of things. Very simple to do. We should all be doing these things and improve your mitochondria. So now I get to be nerdy with my supplements and these are great mitochondrial supplements. PQQ and CoQ10 for the electron transport chain, if you remember how the mitochondria works. And then like I was just talking about with the, the true niogen, that's NR, nicotinamide riboside. Uh, and then there's another one called NMN, and those increase that NAD to NADH ratio. I actually prefer, I think the science is much stronger on doing an NADIV, but it's expensive, it takes many hours, it feels like niacin, so you have to do it slowly so you don't get the burn. Uh, so there's complexity to it. Berberine and cinnamon, reduced glycation. Berberine is my top supplement for all of you guys to go get today. I don't make any money from saying that. It's the number one supplement I could tell all of you to take 
powerfully anti-aging. It's been shown in studies to be as powerful, if not more powerful, than metformin. So it doesn't matter whether you're already thin, whether you're athletic, whether you, you know, diabetes, keto, whatever, you should be on berberine, powerful anti-aging. The new study, uh, controversial maybe with HGH, DHEA, and metformin had people supposedly go back two years in, in aging, you know, I don't know whether, how good that study actually is, but berberine, to give you an example, like I've literally, I did a carbohydrate challenge where I had Pop-Tarts, Oreos, a bunch of stuff, and yeah, that was a fun test to do. And, <laughs> and I had uh, just, you know, nothing, uh, the placebo, and in two hours time, I was checking every 30 minutes my blood sugar, I got up to 199. And I wasn't even going back down at two hours. And I started at like 65, 70. When I took the berberine, this is a week later after a washout, uh, I never got above 100. And at one hour, I was already going back down. Insane. So berberine, I would definitely recommend. CBD curcumin for inflammation. You're hearing a lot about those. EGCG from green tea. Resveratrol, red wine, taro stale bean, blueberries. These are great foods, obviously. That's why you hear about them all the time. Really potent for antioxidation. So more cellular energy equals less fibromyalgia, less hypertonic muscles, less chronic fatigue, less brain fog, more life energy. This is why I felt better. And the keto miracle, as you're hearing, you're like, what? like you know, people are like, oh, you know, like Alzheimer's, epilepsy, you know, Parkinson's, cancer, like bullshit. This disease, like there's no way this diet can do all this stuff. Like weight loss, I get it. But this is how it works. This is literally how it works. It works by remedying the mitochondria and you having sufficient cellular energy. That makes all the difference. And all of these are metabolic diseases. And there's metabolic dysfunction from mitochondrial dysfunction. So do I still struggle? Absolutely. I haven't figured it all out. I still have stress, lots of it, 60, 80 hours a week of work, travel to different time zones. I still crash, but now I know what to do. And I'm a rogue dietitian saying eat high fat. And you know, most of them are saying eat low fat. And I was tired of telling people to eat carbs all day long when they had diabetes and go low fat when they had heart disease. So I say fuck the standard medical care, right? We need to refigure that. And that's why my mission is to educate and empower. So now you know why I'm passionate about keto, but I wanna talk quickly about a cancer patient I had, a glioblastoma multiform. And again, you know, I worked with, uh, with her, told her to work with her oncologist. This is what I would do. I didn't tell her to do these things, but she ended up doing them. She was given six weeks to live, taken off chemo and radiation, stage four brain tumor. She was on junk food because they told her to eat whatever. And I gave her this protocol. Hyperbaric oxygen chamber, ketogenic diet, paleo, IV vitamin C, ketones, PQQ for mitochondrial health, CBD, berberine, curcumin for glycation inflammation, creatine, betaine for methylation, which helps with cancer, HMB free acid for cachexia, holding on to that lean body mass. Six weeks later, when she was supposed to be dead, buried in the ground, taken off of medication and radiation, she had an 80 to 90% reduction in her tumor. Is that not insane? Does this piss you off? <laughs> Pisses me off. This is what she texted me. Praise the Lord, she was religious, said, you know, shrunk 80 to 90%, thank you. I asked her, and this is supposed to be an incurable death sentence, it's what they call glioblastoma. 
No one told you about the ketogenic diet? Not even like when they took her off the chemo and radiation and say, you know what, there's this stupid diet and you know, it might be a farce, but you should try it because you got nothing else. They didn't tell her that. I was the only one that told her about it. And this could be me with my brain cancer. So changing lives is changing my life. And my story, her story, your story, this is strengthening my resolve to teach, to be honest, to have my authenticity. And I have a deeper dive into my autoimmune journey with all the science with Chris Gethin, if you want to check that out. Great friend, amazing guy. And we all have our stories. We've all been, everyone in this room, I'm going to assume keto, paleo, biohacking, all the things, it's because we've been through some serious shit. This isn't just like a room full of people that are interested in some hobby. We've been through body shaming. We've been bullied. We've been depressed. We've had cancer, Alzheimer's. And so I'm thankful to all of you guys that you guys inspire me, you teach me, and it's a give and take. I give help and I get help, and I'm so thankful for all of you here, and it's so awesome to see all these amazing speakers. So these are some of my inspirations, Rob Wolf, Peter Atia, Rhonda Patrick, just so many good people in this area, and it's such an exciting time. I'm not digging through old books anymore. There's just a wealth of information from amazing people, and to be at a conference like this is just incredible. So I want to thank all of you guys. I love you guys. I'll be here for questions. If we don't have much time, then you can catch me in the hall or DM me. Again, I can give you all the slides. So thank you very much, and I appreciate all of you.